first to know in same PTV. In fact, now we are chairman. And I am not going to be ranting about what we are going to do. We are going to say, "I'm from the democracy hub." A quiet demonstration in Trinity. I will come and tell you. Now, the reason for demonstrating is as a result of the fact that almost to say illegal mining, yeah, your friend Galamsi, is causing havoc to the country's natural resources, especially in Sugu. And then you quiet. Now, in collaboration with the Ghana Police Service, they were giving strategic measures. Yeah, or more emphasis, and find back on that demonstration. But a copy a chile no na apa kwe yense bebebe. In fact, videos do do na ba bonti ama Ghana for do do na yeni biyare. How they cause mayhem, blocking roads which was unauthorized. Because causing fear and panic, harassing motorists, bending of ties on our roads, struggling with the police. And same baby, be ya na ni na no any part of any shaya. The Ghana Police Service did work on this. I think they were arrested and arraigned before court of competent jurisdiction with several charges pressed against them. So mumra no mumi jina mreni mu no mo answer to these charges. No muntre adikudientia. The Ghana Police Service they laid down a correct procedure over to me a faso. Aye demonstration they won one faso. No one can say the marriage of Monsem. It could be Sebi and Samfon. I won't come on Teso. And from Monday, no Eddie Bissinra, a total of some over 50 protesters and Oma appear before various courts in Accra to answer to those charges. And I yet one more, I am quite here, I say, the National Democratic Congress. In fact, actually, Karata, Eddie Akoma Shraj, and other civil society organizations say, one, yeah, in terminating assembly the court, no any assembly from field court because it is an infringement on the human rights of those demonstrators. Just say, in some of the be, and on more, I could tell you, crack and more. Do the tea, tea, and tea, tea, and I say, or more support to, and some who, and in some form, right in the good deal on crime on Tesso, in tea, you check his name. Your my petition, the attorney general, my petition, strike. Now, no crime, no enemy, deputy attorney general, you are after trying a boy, or cassa. On this particular front, and I want to get to that, the uh, National Democratic Congress, they have a statement out also today on this. Mm. Uh, and we also know that a petition has now been sent also to Shraj mm. by a group of lawyers. Let's start with that. What is it that the lawyers are asking Shraj to do? They are actually, they start by laying the fact of the issues uh, as they know and also have uh, cited the conduct of the police in all of this, citing different sections of the Constitution as well as the uh, Criminal and Other Offenses Act uh, as the police actions uh, breaching some of those uh, regulations. But they are demanding two key things. One, that uh, per the preceding, they demand that the uh, Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice commence an immediate investigation to investigate the allegations they have raised, and two, that a commission makes a finding and order that one, the rights and freedoms of the uh, protesters were violated, two, that the police's conduct, including unlawful, unlawful arrest, unlawful detention, detention without food, and violation of the right to counsel, amount to unprofessional conduct, and uh, that the commission immediately takes steps, including legal action, to ensure that the violations cease and the police officers who uh, took part in this are dealt with by the law. And mm -hmm. so that's uh, uh, the demand the they are making from that they've sent the from charge. To charge. But what about the NDC? They are yes. making specific demands of the Attorney General. They say that, uh, quote, the NDC hereby demands the discontinuation of the prosecution of these protesters and their immediate release. The uh, increased spate of illegal mining under the watch of the MPP post a uh, an existential threat to all Ghanaian persons who have decided to protest against this menace deserve commendation and encouragement and not con 
custodial punishment as is currently ongoing. Mm -hmm. So, so an immediate discontinuation of, of the, the case. case. In court. I, thankfully, we can uh, bring in now Alfred Chiyaboa, who is a deputy attorney general, joins us on the line. Also weighing in tonight is Dr. Adam Bonai, the security uh, analyst, is the chief executive officer of the Security Warehouse Limited, and Professor uh, Kujia P.J. Chia is associate professor, School of Law, University of Ghana, human rights uh, lawyer himself. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. But I want to start with you, Alfred Chiyaboa. You heard the uh, uh, demands by the NDC that that you should discontinue the case against these protesters. Your reaction? Thank you very much, Ivan. Yes, I've heard the I've not read, I've heard a statement from the NDC. The power to discontinue or to continue a case Gigi. is vested in the Attorney General. We have not taken decision to discontinue the matter. The matter was referred to us for prosecution. We started yesterday, then we are in court today. As and when we take a different decision, definitely it probably get to the bus. I speak now. We've not taken a decision to discontinue the prosecution of this matter. And it, I believe from what I'm hearing in court from my correspondent, is the view of the AG uh, that they should be denied bail? We are in court. Not for the constitutional mandate, in fact, for the constitutional imperative for 48 hours. And so, in court, our argument has been simple that the police need time to do further investigations. But the decision to grant or not grant bail is with the court. Even if we even concede that an accused person is granted bail, it's not binding on the judge. But as we speak tonight, you are uh objecting to their lawyers uh call on the plea on the court to grant them bail the attorneys handed the matter are in court as we speak and they are putting across our case and i think around the day whatever the court says we binding on us you you talk about the police needing more time for further investigations on the matter considering the sheer numbers involved here uh, and the fact that a lot of what we saw was live on television. The police themselves had a recording of this, and they now integrate that into our protest. Don't they already have enough to to get these individuals, if in, indeed they committed acts that were unlawful, prosecuted and prosecuted swiftly? In the first place, none of the accused persons that we have put before court can be said to be guilty at this stage. They are all presumed innocent, even if you have video footage. And so if you have had a video footage, you still need to do extensive investigation. And so because they are not guilty, we cannot say because you saw a video, we should rush into prosecution. But I agree with you. In terms of having matters heard expeditiously, it's something that we all aspire to. And so if there's space for the matter to be heard expeditiously, why not? It's, it's because it is the right of every accused person to have his or her case heard in reasonable time. Yesterday, some of them uh, were remanded into prison custody. I mean, considering how maturing our democracy is, is getting to now, uh, for people to spend time in prison because they protested, isn't that a, a, a bit uh, taking us back to the early days when we, we tried to get this constitution to a place where we entrench the rights of protest, which is really enshrined in there. Yes, I do not want to go into the merits of the matter, but let me make this point. Every accused person, whether you took part in protests, whether you stole, whether you killed, if you are arrested, it is the power of the court to determine whether you are to be remanded or not remanded. And so whether you are remanded into prison custody or into police custody, you can say they've all been confined. And so if the decision of the court that the accused person be remanded to prison custody, that is the decision of the court. And it's part of our legal architecture. Unless we are saying that we should do away with remand and that so far as you are con you, you are, for the moment you are, you are arrested, you should be granted bail without even the nature of the court inquiring whether you should be granted bail or not. It's part of our laws. And this is not the first time that people have been arrested and remanded. And I don't think that is because they protested simply that they are being held. I mean, you know the facts. You've read the chat sheet. 
and the specific areas that the state is looking at. Every, every citizen has the right to protest, to demonstrate, but you do so in accordance with law, as simple as that. What do you say to those who will say that the state is using this case to teach them a lesson, but also to compel them and to subdue them into backing off future protests? Not at all. Was it last week? Last week, people in their thousands took part in demonstrations on the feet of Accra. Were some people arrested? No. Why? Because they did it in accordance with what they agree with the police, and also in accordance with law. And so, if you de- if you want to demonstrate and you are demonstrating in accordance with law, if anybody decides to arrest you, that would be an infringement of your right to demonstrate. In this country, hundreds, if not thousands, of people have taken part in demonstrations. It's only those who at times decide not to go by the rules, who get themselves involved in trouble. This is without prejudice to the matter in this particular case. I'm making a general statement. Uh, thank you very much there. That's Alfred uh, Chiyayibwa. He's a Deputy Attorney General, and we're still waiting to hear from the courts what the court decision is. I want to bring in Professor Kweju Apeju Chia. He's Associate Professor in the University of Ghana uh, School of Law. Uh, Dr. Adam Bona is the Chief Executive Officer of the Security Warehouse Limited. Uh, and Prof, weighing on this for me, you've heard how this has, uh, has become a, a matter of national uh, interest, but also some controversy around the way uh, the protesters have been treated, but also some uh, criticism too of the way the protesters themselves, some of them acted during the protests. Where do you stand on uh, whether or not the human rights question is being dealt with adequately according to law? Thank you for having me. Yeah, a number of human rights issues uh, come up. Of course, the right to demonstrate is well entrenched in our constitution and backed by the Public Order Act. And so, in that context, the demonstrators have the right to demonstrate. Now, other rights issues which have come up, which um, express some concern, include how they were arrested, the reasons for the arrest, where they were um, taken to in various uh, police cells without notification to members of the family and to their lawyers and the fact that some were brought to court without charges against them these are all critical human rights issues as well so it borders on the dignity of the person right to a fair trial uh, issues so um, my question is what is the nature of the offense such that they cannot be granted a bail of course, bail conditions uh, are supposed to be um, directed by the court on an individual case-by-case basis. So it is not that we say that everybody should be granted bail. But what is the nature of the offense? Sometimes the nature of the offense and the circumstances surrounding it determine if a person should be granted bail or not. And if you look at the surrounding circumstances where the, these alleged violators were scattered at various police stations, were not allowed to be accessed by their lawyers and so on. They, they constitute various violations of the rights and dignity of these um, demonstrators. And that is where my concern is. But it's one thing to protest, is it not, which obviously is a constitutional right, but then you have to protest lawfully nonetheless. And, and the arrest that has happened and the detention isn't because they protested necessarily, if you look at the chart sheet, it's because they did so unlawfully, as the prosecution is arguing before the court as we speak. Well, probably I don't have all the facts, but I don't know where the, the, the allegation of protesting unlawfully comes in. They, they talk about unlawful assembly, for example. And, and that, 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 I don't know what that means, because I am, as, assembling is demonstrating, and so... If they go on the demonstration, they are assembling. And so what is the unlawfulness about it? I don't know the details about it, so I may not be able to comment on that. But if it is unlawful, it could mean that they they may have violated some laws, which include maybe vandalizing property or um, doing anything that obstructed the rights of other people to also 
go about freely within that neighborhood. I don't have the facts to, to, to speak to that. But that, that may be a situation where you can talk about unlawful assembly. So in, in any case, if the police have these facts and they can point to that, that they are the demonstrated engage in any of these activities, of course, the police has a power to arraign them before court and to even ask that they do not be granted bail. But a situation where some are denied um, opportunity or access to a lawyer, they are not able to conference with the clients, they are not even charged, some of them, when they were taken to court. These are serious violations. And in the case of um, two people who had fallen ill, by the police denying them access to a medical... Well, the, the police, they have categorically denied that. They've issued a statement to say, as we speak currently, those two individuals in question, Vomo and one other, they're all receiving medical attention at the police hospital, and they did so promptly, uh, according to the police statement. And so that uh, has been discounted, uh, disproved by the police on that. But on the, on the subject of the unlawful assembly, the prosecution have made two arguments on this. One is that the police secured an injunction against the protest at a particular place, and they didn't want them protesting uh, within the vicinity of the Jubilee House because the police deemed that area a security zone. Uh, from the argument that we've heard in court, the police say that some of the protesters who have been arrested violated that particular, the terms of that arrangement, and that is why they've been picked up. Then we also saw the video of the convener who was demobilizing a, a police vehicle and throwing the uh, key away whilst the police chased him down. A vehicle was also parked in the median, which the police wanted to tow away. I mean, these, according to the prosecution, you know, violates the, the rules surrounding protest and public order. Yes, um, if the, there's an allegation of uh, Oliver demobilizing a, a police vehicle, it's true that that is a violation of uh, it, it constitutes a criminal act. So certainly, the police have to take action on that. Um, placing a vehicle in a, in, a, in a place where it obstructs movement and so on could also consider a violation of the right to demonstrate. So on those grounds, yes, the police have to take action to ensure that order is preserved. Uh, so in that context, I would agree that it's taken by the police. Of course, at the end of the day, it's up to the court to determine if a case has, well, has been well made by the police against the protesters in this context. Uh, grateful, uh, Prof. That's uh, Professor Kujo PJ Chair, the Associate Professor at uh, School of Law, University of Ghana. Uh, Dr. Bonard joins us right now. Uh, give me your assessment of how the police have handled this. Well, good evening, Evans. Well, I would say I would give them 8 out of 10. I say that because anyone who has been part of uh, years back demonstrations, the police used to be fond of bringing, you know, recruits from their training facilities who don't have numbers, who probably are still undergoing training, and then they will unleash them on you. They would be demonstrators, people. I mean, your colleague who reported on this matter whilst I was listening, in fact, got uh, injured within the presence of the police headquarters. But if you look at what happened, I monitored it. I spoke to some of the protesters on the day from day one to the second day. I spoke to some police officers on the day, and I watched it, you know, live on TV and, you know, on social media. I would say the police handled it very well, where I would say they've moved away. Maybe I pray that this becomes a constant feature where we won't have the police, you know, using tear gas, firing bullets. Someone got his, you know, uh, the eye damaged completely. Your colleague... Uh, you know, Latif got, uh, his, he has a permanent, uh, you know, scar, I mean, a permanent uh, damage to his skull and all that. And others have suffered. I mean, the law students who were demonstrating some time ago were beating, uh, poured, you know, pepper sprayed on them. And so I would say that uh, the demonstrators could have done this better by not doing some of the things they did. Because as we speak, the reason for which they were there, we are not discussing it. We are discussing Oliver, in fact, you know, going into a police vehicle and removing the key and throwing it away. And some have asked that, oh, so Adam, uh, what do you think? Uh, why didn't they arrest him there? And I say, no, for security reasons, if you did, if they did, they would have been stone throwing, pelting of stones, 
and people would have gotten, you know, varied degree, degrees of injuries. And so arresting him later and arresting other protesters later was the way to go. I would say that remand shouldn't be used as a, a way of punishing people. But I think that as a society, we should learn out of this and be very civil because then anything could have happened looking at the way the demonstrators handled themselves. And prior to that, you look at about almost one million NDC supporters pouring out on the street.